The CEM70, observatory grade, high capacity and sleek. I was extremely surprised when First Light Optics offered me this mount for review. I sat and thought about it for a bit and they said, yes, I would like it. So for the past few months, I've actually had the great pleasure of using this center balanced equatorial mount. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing my feelings about the CEM70. Now every mount needs to sit on something, doesn't it? A tripod, basically. Mine came with the optional tripod. Pier. It's a tripod with three legs. It's basically a pier on a tripod. Who would have thought? It's an optional extra and has to be put separately. However, it's extremely lightweight and very sturdy as well for what it is. The legs at the end are really convenient in which that they actually store inside the pier itself. You undo the bottom and the legs come out there. Bottom them on and secure them in place. The tripod here can hold about 100 kilograms of weight on it. Now that is more than enough to include the CEM70 and almost anything that you're going to be bolting on top of it when you include all the weight capacities. So works perfectly fine, plenty of carrying capacity. Now we're gonna move on to the mount itself. Where to start? The CEM70 is packed full of features from huge capacity, uh, an Arpola system and an integrated USB hub, just to name a few. Let's start at the top. It makes the most sense and work our way down. Start the saddle. It's a dual type Vixen Los Mandy saddle, as you'd expect for this kind of mount. So no matter what telescope, what dovetail your telescope has, you're going to be able to secure it in place. Securing it in place also involves moving two big metal lugs that pinches and holds the dovetail in place. And this is really good because it's not going to damage the tail on your telescope. At the rear of my saddle, there was no less than three DC power ports, your standard center tip positive ports for powering accessories. It draws the power through the mount and the mains, so no need for any additional power accessories for it. Also, there was a handful of USB ports on the rear, two of which are powered, which also connect to the internal USB hub network of the mount. This is for cable management. Again, like I said, loads of features. For a mount like this, you would expect a high carrying capacity, and to that you do get 31.8 kilograms of telescope goodness. That's 70 pounds. Now, on the product description page, link in the description below, there is a small asterisk advising you to not surpass a third of that weight for astrophotography. Now, if you only... On the right ascension axis, you have the brilliant iPolar system. Now, this is an electronic polar scope that comes integrated with the mount. It's fantastic because of this. You just plug a USB cable in the back, which you can also route through the USB hub network inside this mount. It needs no external power either. It runs through the USB on the five volt rail. So one less cable to worry about. Also because it's electronic and it's mounted at the front of the mount, there's no need to move the declination through 90 degrees to be able to use your polar scope. In fact, there actually is no polar scope on this mount. You cannot use a manual polar scope with it. Now that means you have to use a computer. However, I suspect that Ioptron made this for observatories where there's going to be some kind of computer in the observatory itself. So not exactly a drawback in my book. The RA and declination clutches are pretty hench, pretty substantial, even though they are controlled by a slightly dainty switch. When you actually move the switches in and out, you can hear this big mechanical like old-fashioned clunk going in is really satisfying really secure and also because of this there's no real need to set the equatorial home position because one of the clutch positions is the eq home position now i have a video about finding the eq home but not only do you do the clutches find itself like that there is a find zero position setting on the hand control as well now let me just elaborate on that really fast if for some reason you've lost your zero position, you can go to the GoTo Nova 8407 hand controller, I'm sure those numbers mean a great deal to you, and press find home. And the mount will slew itself to the home position. From there, you just fine tune it, hit confirm, and you've re-zeroed your mount to the equatorial home position. Now, as we get towards the bottom, we actually get to the control panel of the mount. Not only is it embossed with the CEM70 logo, it has the power port, the power switch, the hand controller, a USB, and an ST4 port on it. Now imagine a mount of this quality and price tag not having ST4. It amuses me, but thankfully ST4 is here. The USB port on the control panel here is the other end of the internal USB network. This is where you'll plug it into your computer and everything runs through and out of this port. Now I'm going to talk about the power port itself. I really don't like the style of power port because I had it on the HTQ5 Pro, for example, and it broke because it's moving. At least on the CEM, it's in a stationary part, but I just don't like it. 
It also seems to be a bit thinner than most other DC ports. Maybe it's its own proprietary kind of connector, which I hate even more. Like, why? I couldn't power it off of my Lynx Astro box. I needed to use its own plug. So if you're trying to power it through other you know, universal powers, it didn't seem to work. And why? Why would you do that? In terms of alt azimuth, the altitude adjustment is this nice, substantial gear, worm gear that you turn. And on one other hand, I dislike that also. It has these latches on both sides where the indexing is for your altitude height. That's fantastic. It really holds your altitude really securely. You need the Allen key, but it really holds it in place. The problem is, is if you're undoing the altitude knob, sometimes it feels like it doesn't mesh properly and it will go up, but as soon as you go down, it seems to jump out of place and the whole mount will come down more than you want to adjust. Even though you can put the Allen key in and use it as a fine controller, it doesn't really help. It also squeaks a lot. Like this was really loud when I was using it. Once I had all the equipment on it, it was really loud. But it's... I need to put some spray grease on this, I think. But yeah. And I found trying to polo align it, altitude align it without the equipment on it, wasn't a good idea because it would then change when you loaded it up. So it squeaked on the way up and it jumps on the way down. In terms of azimuth adjustment, it can go four degrees each way of zero. It's really responsive, feels a bit springy and a bit spongy, but it's actually really smooth and easy to set. So I quite like the azimuth adjustment on this mount. <laughs> what a thing to be praising it for, but at the same time, I didn't like the azimuth adjustment on the EQ6R Pro. So that's a win for the Altron. Okay, onto actually using it now. To secure the mount to the tripod, you need to bolt two spring-loaded Allen keys in. Now this is a bit fiddly, but if you just push down gently on the bolt whilst you move, wiggle the mount about, you'll eventually find the hole and you can start screwing it down. This is a bit fiddly and it adds a few minutes to your setup and teardown time. Again though, I feel Ioptron was targeting observatories with this where they wouldn't expect it to be set up and torn down every night. So your mileage may vary with it. I kind of just got used to it, but it was a bit of a chore. Polar alignment, super easy, super quick by virtue of the iPolar system. Once you've calibrated it once, it's really rather straightforward. I'm meaning to review the iPolo itself individually at some later date, but yeah, polo alignment, easy, easy, absolute breeze, except for when you try to deal with that squeaky altitude knob. Balancing is pretty simple as well. The counterweight that comes with it is a pretty hefty one. Now I was using it with my Skywatcher EvoStar 80ED, still Lyra six inch Cassegrain and an eight inch Cassegrain telescope. Primarily, I use my ATED, which is a bit light for this mount. The, the uh, counterweight had to be right up the top of the bar and it was still out of balance. Now, one issue the CEM design has is if you put that weight too far up, it's gonna strike the body. You can't get a light load balanced because when you try to put that, that weight up too far, it's gonna hit the body. So I was using it in an unbalanced way, admittedly, but it didn't notice, it really didn't notice. When I put the heavier Cassegrains on, it was easier to balance, and again, it didn't notice. So it carried this payload capacity really rather simply. Now I believe the CM70 boasts accurate tracking performance, so I decided to put that to the test. With my EVOSAR 80ED, which is 510 millimeters after reducing, and an ASI 071 MC Pro, which is a 1.5 times crop factor sensor. And really I only got two minutes exposures, if that, before I saw any trailing at this focal length. Now, two minutes might be plenty for a lot of targets, but I honestly was expecting better. Now, in this defense, there's a lot of factors that go into untracked exposures. Like I've already admitted, the mount was unbalanced. Focal length is another thing, and getting your polar alignment absolutely spot on helps also. But I was still expecting maybe slightly better than two minutes with this mount. Now, one thing that could have been done to improve the tracking accuracy would have been the Permanent Periodic Error Correction, PPEC, PPEC, as I like to say. But because I was using guided exposures, I didn't bother with the PPEC training, but you could. When I first set this mount up indoors and did a dry run, the slewing on it sounded loud, and I began to get worried about it. I 
However, once I was outside and everything was set up and I was just getting on with it, it wasn't actually as loud as I was worried about. It was relatively quiet for such a substantial bit of machinery. Doing guided exposures, once calibrated, I was often getting 0.4 second to 0.6 second error. Really nice flat graph and super long exposures. And that was really useful because guiding is such a mundane thing to have to fight over. So having a nice reliable mount like this worked really well. Now when it comes to moving the mount, it comes with a big, beefy, sturdy, stable, secure, ioptron plastered foam cutout carry case. This control, this has the mount, counterweight bar, plugs, hand controller, etc. in it. You can't fit the counterweight itself into this though, but it's kind of heavy enough without the counterweight. But it's a really nice carry box and I'm pretty sure this would survive even the heaviest hands dropping it. On the whole, using the CM70 was easy and straightforward. I was actually surprised at how straightforward it is to use this mount. Once you'd actually installed all the dedicated software and plugged it all in, it was a case of pressing a button and off it went. There was no learning curve. It was really intuitive and I was surprised by that. The CM70 is a huge, highly capable, feature-ridden mount. I absolutely love the CEM design and I think I prefer it over the GEM design. It can hold a lot of weight, it's accurate, it's relatively quiet, and it's very sturdy. It's also expensive. At the time of this video, the mount alone without the pier is £2,349 or £2,649 if you have the iGuider system. The tri pier is a further £499. That is a lot of money for a mount. However, I suspect it's a mount you're going to have for a very, very long time. Due to all its capabilities and its features and its specs, especially if you're decking an observatory out with it, it's going to sit there, pride of place, bang in the middle of your observatory, being very capable and being a worthwhile investment in my opinion. In short, I'm absolutely in love with this mount. I really thoroughly enjoyed using it. Just there's a few little niggly things about it. As always, there's just little niggly things that let things down. Why do they have a different size jack port on the power port, for example? Why does the altitude gear like to squeal and judder on it? You know, things like that. And to me, these are little user experience things that you can get over, but I feel they shouldn't have even been there in the first place. But then you come into things like this solid guiding, the integrated USB hub, the integrated iPolar system, really great quality of life things. On the other hand, so you have these little niggly user experience stuff that lets it down on one hand and then really good user experience stuff that brings it back up on the other side. And to be honest, things like the iGuider, iPolar completely outweigh the bad points. Now, would I get a CM70? No, not anytime soon. It's too expensive for me. But if I was setting up an observatory or permit setup of some description, I would definitely consider the CM70 especially with the longer nights coming in, just having it set up permanently, a lot less aggravation and taking it down and setting it up every night. So that's when I would look into investing in this kind of mount. If you want more about it, again, there are links to the product in the description down below. Thanks very much for watching everybody. If you enjoyed the video, then hit the thumbs up. And if you disliked it, well, then you know what to do. And consider subscribing for more videos such as this. Now, let me know what do you think about the CEM70. Would you be putting it into an observatory or would you just live with setting it up and tearing it down every night? Drop me a comment down below. And with that, it's time to say clear skies, everybody. Keep looking up, keep their cameras clicking. I'll see you later.